Madison, Wisconsin, which is a mere 613 miles from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania side of this year's NCAA National Finals. But it's going to be a very tough road as two Big Ten heavyweights will battle for the one coveted spot. It's Wisconsin versus Nebraska. And we're set to go, Wisconsin, in their home white uniforms, with the exception of their libero, Tiffany Clark. The transfer from Michigan will start things off before another sellout crowd of 7,052. Exactly. That's as many as they'll let in. And Callie Schwarzenbach again playing with that broken right thumb makes it very difficult for her Karch to control the ball in the attacking phase. Yeah, her errors have gone up. She can't use her thumb and normally you want to use all five fingers and, ex and extend them, get much bigger surface area on the ball. Maddie Kubik, her first swing out of the backcourt, dribbles through the Wisconsin block and down as Jazz Sweet will come on. If you're Wisconsin, if you're a Wisconsin fan coach, what should they be looking for early and then take us to Nebraska? Well, Wisconsin, most of all, just has to focus on themselves. You already mentioned the offensive numbers. They've been devastating. And so if they can keep that up and it starts with a good pass, that's a little too low. Don't get a great swing. Lexi Sun gets a touch. Saved, saved by Haggerty, sets up an opportunity. Maddie Kubik with another dig. Wonderful all-around match last night. Going to see a lot of this all evening long. We had one like that last night, <laughs> it and it hit the scoreboard. So with practice makes perfect, that time Tiffany Clark hitting it just the right height to get it back over the net. Well, there is such a thing as home court or home <laughs> field advantage. you got to know the ground rules. Jazz Sweet turns it down the line and just catching a piece of the end line. Wisconsin has had the better of Nebraska of late. Of course, they have played any number of times. I'll get you those numbers, but the important ones are 2-0 this season, and Wisconsin has won four in a row going back to 2017. Here is Sun, again, who was brilliant last night. And both those matches this year, 3-0 sweeps. Transition swings. Kubik looking for a touch off the top of the block. None detected, and it will be a hitting error. That was a really good swing, but just missed a piece. And in those two sweeps, Nebraska hit only 287. Actually, one of the matches, they hit over 300. It was the first time in 300 matches that they had hit over 300 and lost. But that's the kind of offense that Wisconsin has, and it's led by their kill leader, average kill leader, Dana Retke. Nothing, zero no, errors. Nothing average. <laughs> <laughs> nothing Dana, average about those Dana numbers. Retke, six foot eight. Two-time All-American. She will be a first-team All-American in this, her junior year, and was nearly perfect against Nebraska in two matches. And we watched Wisconsin practice this yesterday, expecting some serving from Nebraska to try to take Redke more out of the offense. And that ball missed out of bounds. So Nebraska will take the early 4-3 lead. Best three out of five sets. First four sets to 25 points. Of course, the challenge system is in effect. And you can see Coach Cook on the sideline. He talked about easy gives when you put it over versus difficult ones. And he's telling Jazz Sweet, you can't just hit it easy to middle back. You've got to make them work for it. Service pressure is going to be vitally important for both teams. That ball missed out of bounds. That was Grace Loberg, six foot three junior out of Geneva, Illinois, who was nine for 18 against UCLA, 10 for 25 last night. And you can see what this taller block is doing to Loberg. Already two errors. She was not intimidated by the block yesterday. You know how many errors Loberg had in the first two matches? Zero. 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 Already <laughs> two. And we're not even a fifth of the way through this first set. Nebraska's getting lots of transition opportunities. 
All-American against All-American, and the first strike goes to Dana Recchi. Yep, and they're not actually going to battle at the net that much because Dana Recchi started where you would expect her to, at left front. They want to get her in the front more, uh, front court more. It's only now that Stiverns has come up to the front. Oop, that's close. Another easy giveaway. Danielle Hart, nice block touch. That ball's dug too tight. Good cover and reaction by Jazz Sweet to keep that ball alive. Loberg again. Loberg taking some really tentative swings. Loberg again. <laughs> Nothing tentative about that. In between Sweet and Stiverns for the kill and we're tied. Yep, that's what she needs to do. She was picking her spots really carefully, but she's got a cannon of an arm and the best thing she can do is just hit it high and hard, deep third and fourth. And Retke, after playing internationally this summer for you, Karch Kirai, has become a much better server and defender. Yep, they have her playing in the middle back area of the court. Middles don't normally do that. Smart shot by Hilly. Up into the block, restart the point with an offensive rebound. And then setting Dana Retke on the pipe. That may be asking a little bit much. Well, it was a little low. She could have put that away. You don't see them actually setting her out of that transition play, but she's got the capability of executing all the skills well. That's why they have her playing defense in middle back. As a reminder, the six foot eight Dana Retke, a remarkable, remarkable athlete. Oh, that ball's got to come up. Some confusion there between the freshman Cubic and Stiverins, and they both froze. Yeah, when the ball comes up that high, I think that Stiverns has got to come down and make a touch. Actually, if Maddie Cubic can make that play, it's probably easier for her. She's just got to call it out, call Stiverns off. Yeah, they're talking about it right there. A serve. Both of these teams just serve the lights out, put a lot of emphasis on that phase. Sydney Hilly, six foot junior out of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, Big Ten, setter of the year. First team all Big Ten, of course, as well. Shank pass again, good save. Haynes keeping that ball alive for the Cornhuskers. Good read by Knuckles. Lexi Sun ripping out of the backcourt, but missed it long. Lexi Sun is saying that ball is in, and we might have our first challenge. Again, each team gets three challenges unless the match goes the distance to the 15-point tiebreaker, and then you get an additional. Let's take a look. Oh, oh yeah. that ball's Wait. in. Wow. <laughs> Megan Miller, number three in red for the Cornhuskers, is having all kinds of receiving problems right now. In area one, the right back. Paul, you mentioned it. Nebraska had a great serving team, but Wisconsin's owning them in that phase of the game. Serve and first contact, critical in every volleyball match forever and a day. And Wisconsin has taken the advantage here. Yeah, look at lower right there. Seven aces in the first two meetings, zero for Nebraska. Wisconsin already two aces from Hilly tonight. She is driving the ball hard cross court from what we call zone one to zone one. That time Knuckles could, cuts the ball off, but Wisconsin with a great scoring chance here. Loberg again, who has steadied out after making a couple of unforced errors. A look back at a service winner. Yeah, this is that hard serve that Hilly's been hitting what, from zone one to zone one, from right back to right back. And when you serve cross court, Paul, you can hit it harder. It has four, five or six more feet to travel than it does down the line. Sun tipping out of the back court. Good read that time by Duello. You're right, it didn't fool anybody. Well, there, there are a few secrets here, this being the third meeting on the season. Another, sort of the final chapter in that serving story, Wisconsin had seven aces, 14 errors. Nebraska had zero aces, 14 errors. That's going to be a net violation. That called on number 18 in white, the red shirt sophomore, Danielle Hart. But a very, very good run at the service line from Sydney Hilly. That ended a 6-0 run. Candidate for National Freshman of the Year, Maddie Kubik, back to serve. Another good swing. 
We've talked about it, Karch. After a slow start, you can write yourself a new chapter. I know it's only midway through the opening set, but what a nice adjustment here by Loberg. Yeah, her last three swings were completely different, and I can see at least one of the coaching staff talking to her to say, look, what you do best is absolutely let it rip. Don't be afraid of that Nebraska block. And there is another ace for Wisconsin. Remember, Nebraska is traditionally a great serving and passing team, but Wisconsin has been beating that, beating them in those two phases of the game, in the two meetings this season and this third one so far. Megan Miller will go to the sideline, replaced by number 43, Haley Densberger, 5'9", junior, out of Malcolm, Nebraska. And Wisconsin was really, really targeting Miller, number three, who's now on the sideline. Good, smart substitution, disrupt the serving rhythm a little bit, and Nebraska gets the error. And we haven't even seen one of Wisconsin's best serving weapons come Izzy's to the coming. line yet. <laughs> Izzy Ashburn's coming. She was gnarly yesterday. Also executing that diagonal, that cross-court serve, but she'll hit it from the, from the other corner that we saw Sydney Hilly hitting it. Nicole Drunick, 6'1", freshman out of Dallas, Texas, on to serve now for the Cornhuskers. Haggerty, by memory, her first swing, dug by Densberger, long run. And Good set. set in transition. Oh, a better block. Lexi Sun is a dynamic blocker, number 11 in red for the Cornhuskers. Yeah, and Wisconsin coach Sheffield said, look, if you don't fool her, if you give her time, she is going to be gnarly. So we have to run some different looks at her, get her off balance so that she can do, they want to keep her from doing that as much as possible. Vanessa Sabo also on the floor now. Good block touch out of the middle by Schwarzenbach. And Sabo, number five in red, is stuffed. A 6'3 redshirt sophomore out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Just played nine matches last year. But when we watched her in serve and practice the other day when we first got here to Madison, she was crushing some balls. But this is a little different situation. Yeah, Nebraska trying to score some points after being down by four or five. So they brought in a blocker for their setter, Nikki Hames, who's 5'10", brought in a taller blocker. Got the scoring chance they wanted, but didn't close it. Another swing out of system. Deep into the cross court, dug by Barnes. Haggerty. Well, Tiffany nice. Clark. The offensive line is doing a job right now defensively. That ball just missed out of bounds. If you watched our coverage just yesterday, Dana Recchi in her post-match interview called all the defensive specialists and Tiffany Clark the Libro her offensive line. They're the <laughs> ones that open things up for her to register kills. It was a great line. Yeah, they explode out, make the first contact in football, and they're going to do it in volleyball. They're the ones who make this good first touch. That's a perfect one, but Recchi doesn't kill it. Tight for Sweet, off the edge of the block, smartly by number seven, Jazz Sweet. Incredibly improved like Lexi Sun from last year. It was this morning at serve and pass. There's the O-line. That is the smallest O-line <laughs> in the history of the Big Ten. <laughs> Look at Sydney Hilly and Dana Retke back there ready to go. Retke ready to go a little hard running back. And uh, nice camera work by you, Sunday. Well, they were all standing still. I couldn't quite mess that up. Well, I probably could. Hittable set in transition, beautiful shot. Lexi Sun, perfectly done, and a nice set out of the middle. I think that was by Schwarzenbach, again, with that fractured thumb. Yep, and last year, Lexi Sun might have hit that into the elbows of Dana Retke. This year, she finds the fingers and a kill that goes off the top of the block and well beyond the defense. Nebraska right back in it. Good block touch. And right back at you, it's Retke with a block touch there. And then threw the seaman down. A little miscommunication or hesitation that time between Hames and Kubik between area one and area six. Yeah, if you're a coach, you'd rather see at least one, but I can see two, people's, uh, two people going after that. Hames diving to her left, but she'll go in front of Kubik in middle back going to her right. Here is Izzy Ashburn. And immediately getting Nebraska oh, in all kinds set. of trouble. Beautiful set. 
That ball might have caught a piece of the antenna. They're rolling off the top of the tape and down by Haggerty, the 6'1 redshirt junior out of Glen Ellen, Illinois. Yesterday we saw Ashburn. Ooh. Wow. At the net court. I don't know if they hit the tape. But well. Server Ashburn, we saw her serving from left back. This time she's changed it and she's hitting diagonally the opposite way. Nice play out of the middle. Any offense they get out of Schwarzenbach is a real positive. Badgers lead it 16-13 with Sun going back to the line. Both teams doing a wonderful job defensively. We talked about the numbers that Wisconsin was hitting coming in. They're hitting 062, but now Nebraska's hitting zero, meaning they have the same number of kills as errors. Oh, good serve. But a great set. Dug by Barnes down the line, an opportunity. Haggerty is hot in transition right now. Love the defense these two teams are playing. Two great ups on either side, and Haynes almost coming up for it with a third one. Had to reach to her left, couldn't get two arms on it. And less surface area, less control. Haggerty now with four kills on 11 swings. Sweet again. And another block touch, and this one goes down deep into the blue. Does it seem to you, Karch, early, both teams are touching a lot of balls, but does it seem to you that Wisconsin is getting the better swings as a result? They are, but Retke has not really been at terminal. That's unusual for Wisconsin. They haven't been able to get their middles going. They've gotten, really, Wisconsin's only had kills from their left side. Retke is 0 for 4, which is really unusual, particularly the number she's been putting up so far in the tournament and that she put up in the two matches earlier this year against Nebraska when she was 22 of 45 with no errors. And Duello on the right side also with no kills for Wisconsin. That's the unusual pattern for Nebraska where they have their middle Stivrens hit on the left side. Does it make it harder for Stivrens when she hits on the left to transition back to defense? She was late getting back into the middle. She's there, but she was really still moving, and that ball could not be dug. Timeout called by Nebraska. The Badgers leading 19-14 as Dana Redke registers her first kill. Sunday at 1 Eastern, noon Central Time on ESPN and the ESPN app. This is one of women's college basketball games of the weekend. Number 14, Kentucky squares off against their bitter rivals. The number seven Louisville Cardinals. Louisville's won three in a row against the Cats. And I was thinking about Louisville. They're going to be struggling for audience. The Louisville, they're going to be up late. That nat match coming up in Austin, Texas. It'll be the Louisville Cardinals taking on the number seven seed, Minnesota Golden Gophers. And Baylor has advanced. What a remarkable job Ryan McGuire has done. Building that team from the ground up. Again, it's just their eighth ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. Yesterday was their first ever regional final, and now, a wonderful team effort at home in Waco, and they are moving on to Pittsburgh and will take on the winner of Wisconsin-Nebraska. And led, of course, by a strong candidate for player, national player of the year, Yossi Presley, who has been so devastating offensively. She can hit front row various zones and back row various zones. She adds a whole very different dimensions to a, a, a number one ranked offense. That is an important conversation going on right now. When you prioritize things with your setters on the Olympic team, what's your message to them? Well, the first thing is that you want them to get a good set. Don't put the ball away for the hitter. Just put something up there so that the hitter can do her job too. But then Haynes is going to be looking across the net and the good matchup is at the blocker on the other side of the net. She did not set that way that time, but normally the best matchup would have been to set at Sydney Hilly. Jazz Sweet registers her fourth kill. Once again, tremendously improved. The outside hitters who were really good, particularly Lexi Sun. Wisconsin's done a good job. Sun is only one for eight so far. Get your Cubics numbers in just a moment. Off the top of the block and down once again. 
What an adjustment made by number 21, Grace Loberg, first team, all Big Ten. Yeah, she's unloading on the ball now in those first four or five swings. Very tentative. The outside hitters for Nebraska right now are two of 15. Lexi Sun doing a little house cleaning. She's got that good all around game. Here's Hilly again. She had a great service run serving cross court. And Megan Miller is back on who they were targeting and that ball hit out of bounds. Badgers lead it 21-15, largest lead of the opening set. Yeah, if you're in Nebraska, you have to take advantage of the good passes when you have them. They had one there. Stiffens just hitting the ball a couple of feet out. Off the top of the tape and down. Ace number three for Wisconsin. Make it four. And remember, they only they had seven in two matches before. They already have four in the first set. Not done yet. Another trouble play. Pretty good set. That's hittable. <laughs> Lauren Stephens, the six foot four All American middle blocker out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Set me in the middle, set me on the left, now set me on the right. Shh, and take she's care of this. Laughing. She didn't even have an approach there. And just didn't know a step, hop, one foot, two foot, but she figured out a way. Loberg again going to the hot hand. Good block touch. Need a quality swing here. Going to Stiverens on the slide. Wow. Grace Loberg, six kills now. And remember, she had no errors in the last two matches of the NCAA tournament to number 21 in white as she is subbed out for one of the defensive specialists. Had two early and had just been on a, a roll with, since. And if you're a Wisconsin fan, you got to be happy that um, the middles, Hart, Retke, no kills. The opposite, one kill and a fifth ace to take him to set. Wow, wow. What a display of serving. We knew it was going to be a huge story, but we didn't know it was all going to come in set number one. Densberger comes on to replace Miller. Lexi Sun registers just her second kill. In the two regular season matches, the scores were average 25-21. This has been all Wisconsin since an early 9-6 timeout called by Nebraska. Drunick back on. Along with Sabo. Tight pass. Sydney Hilly is in the back court, and once Lexi Sun contacts the ball, Sydney Hilly is ruled a backcourt blocker, so immediately the violation. Second set point. Oh, that hit Lexi Sun in the back, so a double contact. It does not have to be intentional. I don't think it has anything to do with luck, because that was seven straight set wins for Wisconsin. Haggerty and Loberg have 10 of the 12 Wisconsin kills. Nicklin Hames and Nebraska will start things off second set underway. Very easy swing by Duello there. Jazz sweep. That is a really wonderful swing. She's been the best offensive weapon so far. She's hitting 600. She's 6 of 10. Jazz Sweet last year did not even play in rotation number one. She gave up to Capri Davis and again, it's really, really improved offensively and defensively. There's one of the first serves that Nebraska's caused trouble with. Jazz Sweet again, nice pokey that time by the Libero Clark. That ball off the edge of the block and out of the bounds. Smart shot that time by Haggerty, number 23 in white. Well, you and I talk about winning within the rally, losing within the rally. Wisconsin was losing that yes. rally badly. What a great play by Haggerty to pull a point out of the fire just when the block was almost surely going to stuff that. Here is Ashburn again. Look at her ace numbers. That's per set. 
almost hit the floor. Good pass that time by the Libero Knuckles. That's got to be a lift. No question about that. Easy play to call against Retke. And Lexi Sun will go back to serve. Lexi Sun started her career one of the most uh, touted high school players in many, many years. She spent her freshman year at the University of Texas before transferring to Nebraska. First team all Big Ten this year. Tough serve. Oh, look at that pass. And Retke is still without a kill, looking for a touch, but that ball out of bounds. Yeah, you were talking about Sun last year. She ended up hitting 195 after being out for a long time, recovering from injury. Wasn't really completely ready for the Big Ten season this season, hitting 283 and showing a much greater number of weapons in her arsenal. Nice dig by the freshman Libero Knuckles from Nebraska. And the net ball stuffed Hilly, along with some help from Dana Retke. And Coach Sheffield talked about that, Paul. When the scramble play is going on, they want their Wisconsin blockers to completely shut down the line. So in that case, Sydney Hilly was trying to get her left-hander inside hand on the ball. Boy, that was really a beautiful set that time by Nicklin Haynes. But, Karch, let's expand on that because we talked to Coach Sheffield, and he said, look, usually you want your hand on the ball. Your outside Outside, hand. but talk to us about the adjustment that he described. Yeah, very normally you might put your outside hand on the ball if you're a wing blocker, or maybe if you want to shut down a little more line, you might put your nose on the ball. But they want their inside hand on the ball because they just got torched out of system in scramble plays. Nice touch. That ball dug by Knuckles, but that is the first kill for Dana Retke. <laughs> Being shut out was not going to last. She's hitting 401 on the year. Uh, but Coach Sheffield was talking about where, where Nebraska had the huge advantage in those two matches was not when they had a good pass, but when they were really scrambling, their setter was on the run. Which is almost completely counterintuitive. Another high flat shot. Nice overhand dig that time by Retke. And then missed out of bounds down the line. <laughs> when you have somebody 6'8", <laughs> that, that tool is not, that might go on Tiffany Clark. <laughs> That's not going to go on Redke. There's high flat, and, <laughs> and then, then there's, there's a whole other, you got to aim for the penthouse. you got to aim for the 30th <laughs> row to get it over Redke in middle back. Another sellout crowd on hand at the UW Fieldhouse. This building on it is on the National Historic Registry. 7,052. It might hold 9,000 in the future, but right now the building is so old that only a couple of the sections are open up above. The others don't meet code. Going to have to break a few extra fire doors in here, and maybe they can get nine, pack 9,000 in next year. They have so, many, so much of this group coming back. All but one. Nice play on the tap down. On the overpass. The defensive specialists for Nebraska are struggling. First, it was Megan Miller, number three in red, who's on the sideline now. And then she was replaced by Densberger, who had that overpass there. She's right there, number 43, in the near screen. And working on her again. Better pass. Looks like somebody netted. Kenzie Knuckles hanging in. That ball a touch off the edge of the block. That's the shot down the line that most concerns Kelly Sheffield in transition. It is, but that one they really couldn't shut down because the dig was so good. We would call that in system. Nebraska had lots of options to set. There is Maddie Kubik, 6'3", freshman out of West Des Moines, Iowa, the number four overall prospect. Ace serve. That is the first ace through two matches in the regular Big Ten season in the opening set here tonight in the regional final. And this morning we saw, you saw Loberg at the, on the left of your screen bailing out. We, we saw Wisconsin practicing various strategies to try to get Loberg out of the passing formation. Boy, look at that pass. Karch, talk about three hitter rotation and the combination plays. This was just a straight line run by Duello, but why is this so hard to stop? You have a slide going to your right. You have a, ver a big threat on the left with Loberg, and that leaves one strong blocker and one just late helper blocker. Duello has had a lot of success with that combination play in the middle of the court. One on one second tempo. You take that all night long. That ball out of bounds. Cannot be tracked down. Nice effort. Got to be careful, Molly Haggerty. 
Lauren Barnes, five foot six junior out of Naperville, Illinois. Interesting story. Transferred from Minnesota, where she paid, played 31 matches last year for Hugh McCutcheon and the Gophers. And is part of the O line that we showed <laughs> earlier that has all these great first touches, like the one Tiffany Clark just started this last rally with. That's a good matchup, is it not? Haggerty working against Hames. It's especially good when you have the perfect pass, and the blockers for Wisconsin are worried not just about Haggerty, but about a middle threat and a right side threat. So it leaves a big hole in the block, and Haggerty attacks it perfectly. And you see Schwarzenbach was very, very late trying to close. Tough opportunity. And Schwarzenbach comes right down. That's about as good a connection on the slide as we've seen since she broke her thumb. It is, and that's another part of the Nebraska offense that Coach Cook said they need help with. They cannot be one or two dimensional. They need some kills from Schwarzenbach. That was her second. They need some help from Stiverens, who is actually hitting negative at this point. One kill, but two errors. Bigger block. Oh, what a cover by Barnes. That was weak sauce. On the shot. <laughs> On the shot. <laughs> That was that not was strong sauce. Defin <laughs> definitions, please, Coach. Yeah, when you send a ball, when somebody sends a ball over easy, you got to just rip a hole in the floor with it on, on that overpass. And Schwarzenbach did not. She's a little lucky the Huskers won that rally. Nebraska really upping their game offensively after a very slow start, hitting 364 so far here in the second. Back to Retke, high off the top of the block and out of bounds. Dana Retke. Two-time All-American already. She was National Freshman of the Year a couple of years ago. Six-foot-eight junior out of Riverside, Illinois. And she, too, if we haven't already mentioned, you met, mentioned Yazi Presley, but also Retke, a candidate for National Player of the Year. Weak sauce. <laughs> Strong, can, I, can I steal it? Sure. Strong, strong sauce. Sure. Okay, Paul, on that last play, we saw Hilly and Retke have worked together so much over the last few years that we see they have such a great combination. Even when Hilly gets pulled out of the pocket and is on the run, she got Retke a great swing two swings ago. Out of system once again, away from Sweet, looking for Lexi's son. Nicely down the line, dug by Barnes. And that's going to be a net violation. that first kill by Recky. Watch how Sydney Hilly runs to the left, our left, way forward, and she can still get a really good look to Dana Recky. They have mastered that combination. And that's why some coaches in this conference voted Hilly as player of the conference because she's done such a good job getting all five of those of their weapons going. There is that out of system, good swing down the line. That wasn't a chip. That was a full hatchet yep. job down the line off the edge of the block. Yep, and Hilly didn't take enough line. Wisconsin wants them to basically take mega line, force them to hit cross court. That ended a 3 nothing run for Wisconsin. Saved legally by Haggerty. Good block touch, creating an opportunity. Dug by Knuckles down the line. Recky off the block and out of bounds. Fourth kill for Recky after the bagel in the opening set. This is the second time Haggerty coming off and the fans helping her, pushing her back in. Gets set up. Well, it's legal now in football, so the O-line, you know, you can push from behind. <laughs> exactly. It used to be the bush push, and it wasn't legal, but now it is as Jazz Sweet continues to be the best offensive weapon for the Cornhuskers now with eight kills on 14 swings, no errors. You mentioned that Hilly and Retke have spent so much time together. They both left high school early. Sidney Hilly wanted some time with Lauren Carlini, one of the two setters on your Olympic team. She wanted to come in. She wanted to grab a hold of the job since Carlini was graduating, and she wanted to learn from Lauren Carlini, one of the wonderful setters over the last decade or more. 
Yep, and it didn't hurt to get a little start on that genetics, genomics. <laughs> Major, that's... Don't, we, we're, we can barely say it, but she's... I know I can't. <laughs> genetics, I think I could with spell check, but genomics, I got no chance. First team academic All-American and a 3.79 GPA. Really impressive student athlete. That was the first block for Nebraska, and that was Jazz Sweet, best player on the floor for the Cornhuskers. And another back-to-back -back stuff blocks. 14-11 is the advantage for Nebraska. But the reason that point happened for Nebraska, it was from the tough serve from Knuckles. Kelly Sheffield and Wisconsin want a timeout. It's a sea of red. Yeah, and some of them came from Nebraska. <laughs> for more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Back with three-time Olympic champion Karch Kirai. I'm Paul Sunderland. Nice run here by Nebraska after they lost the opening set 25-18 to take the three-point advantage. Two blockers up on Retke. Really good touch. Hilly had to make the first contact. As did Nicklin Hames. And cut inside the block. When we talked to head coach John Cook from Nebraska earlier today, he said when they went back and looked at the film and charted it, they noticed that they sent over 20 very easy balls. And a lot of them were to Tiffany Clark, the Libro. They're doing a better job, or his, is his team doing a better job, of moving it around on other players? It's better, but it's, I'm sure, not where Cook wants it to be. But their serving has definitely improved and created more chances. Nice dig by Hames. Perfect set in transition. Ricky off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Even though Retke got that kill, you got to admire the Huskers' response. And if they take this second set, they put a little doubt in the Wisconsin's mind just because Wisconsin has not lost one this season in these three matches to this. We saw the turnaround for Retke. Zero kills in the opening set, five of eight so far here in the second. She is a dangerous weapon serving. The women's net height is 7'4 and 5'8 inches. She's 6'8. <laughs> She's serving down into the court. I want no part of that. Here is Densberger taking over for Miller at the DS. Perfect pass. Good read by Knuckles. Emmy Dodge with a saving dig. All those defensive specialists, there's nobody to take a back row swing from Wisconsin. What a block. Beautiful play by Grace Loberg, one-on-one -on -one against the All-American Stiverins on the right side slide. Yeah, we call this mirroring, where that left side blocker, number 21, Grace Loberg, commits, commits, and just takes herself out of the play and follows the slide hitter, goes one-on-one. -on -one. That ball hit off the top of the block and out of bounds. Nebraska looking for a touch. The coaching staff is thinking about a challenge. If they do not challenge, the call will stand. Ball ruled out of bounds. 16-14, Nebraska leads it. Hilly at the line. Overpass. Paul, that's not counted as an ace, but in my mind it is. When you get an overpass that leads to a point, another great Wisconsin serve. Timeout called by Nebraska. Sydney Hilly playing in her 338th consecutive set for Wisconsin. Nice dig. Got to get Stiverance going and finally into the cross court. Wisconsin with some bad luck on that play. Loberg came down from her block and just fell to the floor, so she couldn't take a good swing off that dig. There is Kubik, who's, who, like Lexi's son, has been very quiet offensively. We'll give you their totals or lack thereof in a moment. Loberg has not been quiet. Grace Loberg now with eight kills on her 20th swing after a slow start. 
Lexi Sun and Maddie Kubik, the two outsides for Nebraska, are combined seven for 29 with five errors. Here is Barnes. Tough serve. Oh, what a save. Deep swing for Haggerty. Talk about perfectly placed. That only comes with days and hours and weeks and months of repetition. Wow, what a swing. Tied at 17. Can she do it again? <laughs> Going short this time. That was easy for Knuckles. And that threw the block and down. Lexi Sun registers her sixth kill. Yeah, if you're Haggerty and you want to hit something off speed, the last person you want it to go to is the person with the different color jersey. She's the one with the best ball control. If possible, you want to get somebody else on the floor. And preferably the opposing setter if you can. Yeah, but if she's blocking, then you want to pull the off blocker onto the floor, and then they have no outside hitter. Sabo in in the front court, wearing number five in wed. Here is Drunick. And Nebraska called for being out of rotation when they're serving. Oh, I don't like it, Paul, when referees get involved in the game. It doesn't matter if somebody's standing two feet to the left or two feet to the right. There's it has no, no effect game. on the play whatsoever. Wow. And now Let we're going to have to talk about it. Let the players determine the outcome. What you do is give them a warning. Say, look, you're standing in the wrong place. Get it fixed. Don't give a free point in a national regional final. Yep. There we go. Agree. Uh, One thousand percent. They call a replay. And no matter whether the call was correct or not. Well, Kelly Sheffield's got. I don't want to see people whistling a play dead over nothing. And Coach Sheffield's got it. He said, look, you called it. Why, why, are, why is it not being enforced? So they gave him an explanation. And we're moving on. A break for the Huskers. Drunick will continue to serve on the replay. And here's that rotation where Wisconsin has Haggerty on the left, Duello hitting a combination play in the middle, Hart on the slide. Outside to Haggerty. Blockers were facing and thinking Duello was coming, Karch. Really, really good choice by Hilly to the outside. Yeah, Schwarzenbach was thinking, here comes that combination play down the middle of the court. Great choice by Hilly. Let's see how she distributes the ball, uses her all five of her weapons. Sixth tie of this, the second set. Wisconsin has yet to lead. Here is Clark. Lexi Sun. Couldn't tell if that went through or off the edge, but either way, a much needed impressive kill for number 11. Yeah, and as we mentioned before, maybe last year that ball would have been low into Dana Retke's elbow for his stuff, but that was high off an end hand. Lexi Sun really Im improved and impressive with all that's in her arsenal now. Another perfectly executed offensive play. A lot of attention going to Retke. Yeah, and Retke jumping there. It freezes the blockers just for a second, especially that right side blocker tonight, number seven, Jazz Sweep. Here is Ashburn. Blocked on the outside by Haggerty. That is the first time Wisconsin has stopped Jazz Sweep. Block number five for Wisconsin, two for Nebraska. We talked about it just seconds ago. This is the first lead for the Badgers. Good pass. Right back to Sweet. Yeah, Nebraska has a few different options. When Jazz Sweet is left front, they can leave her over there like they did yesterday. Today, they're running her around, and I like the fact that Nicklin Haynes decided, you know what? Okay, she got blocked once. I'm going to show a lot of trust in her. Set her again. Sweet with another kill. Here is Sun, who's really picked up her game here in the second set. I'll give you those numbers in a second. 
Knuckles is doing an outstanding job at the Libro. That ball off the block and out of bounds. Rick thought she got it. There's no question the ball was out of bounds, and there's no question that it went off of Wisconsin. You know what? You always want to help the referees make the call a little bit, so it never hurts to... I tried to help them my whole career. <laughs> it doesn't work very often, but, you know, you can try and win a little acting award in the meantime. Tied at 21. Mentioned Lexi Sun. Slow start. She's now 7 of 18. Creeping her way up to hitting 300. She has flipped the script as well, as did Grace Loberg for... Uh, Wisconsin. But nobody else on Nebraska over two kills. Only Sweet and Son picking up a, carrying a big load. And Haynes is riding Jazz Sweet here. Maybe a little bit too much. That ball was flailed out of bounds. Badgers back on top. Wisconsin controlled the opening set. Won it 25 to 18. Nebraska led 14 to 11. And the crowd needs no prompting to get right back into this. 16th straight sellout at the Fieldhouse. Congratulations once again to the Baylor Bears. Only the eighth time in the NCAA tournament they have advanced. Shocking result. Congratulations to the Louisville Cardinal as they give the Texas Longhorns an unexpectedly early exit. Louisville will take on Minnesota coming up from Austin, Texas, right after the conclusion of our match. Wow. First of all, your thoughts on Baylor and what we've seen from them during the course of this tournament run. Well, they've been impressive. I expected Washington's serving and passing to give Baylor more trouble. Didn't get to watch the whole match, but we had it on as we were preparing here, and it looked to me like Baylor won the serve-pass battle. Credit to their backcourt players who don't get normally a lot of props. Their old line, if you, would, if you will. <laughs> but they have a variety of serving styles. One of them is Yossi Presley, who stands really deep. And even Coach Sheffield said, yeah. because Baylor came in this building and beat Wisconsin, and he said she ate us up with that deep float serve. And the timeout, want to remind you that tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app will have the 85th Annual Heisman Trophy Ceremony from New York City. Will it be LSU's Joe Burrow, Oklahoma's Jalen Hurts, Ohio State's Justin Fields, or his teammate Chase Young? The Heisman Trophy Ceremony is presented by Nissan. Wanted to add a comment, if I could, Karch, about Baylor. I did the Baylor-Texas match in Austin when Baylor absolutely got crushed by the Longhorns. They hit 084, and it, it twisted my impression of Baylor. I thought, wow, these, this team's not for real. Boy, are they making a liar out of me. Nice play by Sun. They had a bad match, and Texas played probably as perfectly as they possibly can. Baylor picked themselves back up. In the rematch, they won in five, and they are going on to the national semifinals. Yeah, and I don't know if it makes a liar out of anybody, but it just makes people wrong. They are, they are legit. And if Wisconsin can win here, what do you have look at next is a rematch between number one seed Baylor, number four seed Wisconsin. But Nebraska's going to have a lot to say about that still in this match. Tied at 22. Tied for the ninth time. Nice up. Clark, the libero. Loberg going off speed. That was easy sauce. Yes, that was weak sauce. And ball out of bounds. Karch on some quality touches. Nothing in transition out of the middle for Nebraska. Stiverance has been silent. Stiverance has two kills on 11 swings and three errors. But they've had Sweet. She's pretty hot. And so Hames is, like, right now, going back to her, but maybe going to the well too often. Set points. A ball hit out of bounds. A ball hit into the net by Sweet, who has been superb so far through two sets. For a two sets to none advantage. Badgers, the number four overall seed, are one set away from a trip to Pittsburgh. Jazz Sweet doesn't need any luck. She's 11 of 23 against one of the best serving, blocking, and defensive teams in the country. 
connection not there for Schwarzenbach. What a good shot. Molly Haggerty has been the star of the offensive side of the ball so far for Wisconsin. And interesting, coaches can change the matchups if they want, Paul, and choose a different starting server, but neither team doing it. Nebraska thinking they were pretty close in that last set, so no need to change the matchups. Nice play by Nicklin Hames on a 50-50 ball right on top of the net. Haggerty had 12 kills on 27 swings as Wisconsin hit 394 against a very good team from Texas A&M, and she's in double figures already tonight. Third set underway, must-win situation for Nebraska to extend the match. You look at the numbers, Karch, Nebraska hit 075 in the opening set, got hot in the beginning and then cooled off with Jazz Sweet, finished 175 in the second, whereas Wisconsin went up to 289 right about at their season average in the second set. But for much of that set, Wisconsin was not at that number, and it was thanks to improved and better serve pressure for Nebraska. They're, to have a chance in this match, they're going to have to turn it up and serve like they did early in that second set. A ball off the top. No, no touch detected. Out of bounds. And what a smart shot. The little things. Molly Haggerty cuffed that ball down the line and got it on Nickel and Hames and made Kenzie Knuckles step in and make the second contact. Really smart. And now Nebraska changes their setup, and Jazz Sweet is going to run across. You see her running across to the right of your screen. That's a long run. That she was going out run. towards center field. And if you lose a couple of points, it's exhausting. Wow. It's like sprint after sprint. But that's where she is better, is when she runs across to the far sideline, the sideline behind the setter. Here is Sun. Really picked it up in the second set. Moving up towards 300. That's well, the Nebraska coaches. Kayla Banworth, the Olympian, expecting her first child. It was an overrule by the first referee. Now, Kelly Sheffield can challenge if he wants to, if he thought that ball was out of bounds. He chooses not to, but you, you might have seen Kelly Sheffield motioned with his forearms. Let's take another look. Ooh. Ooh. That was worth another look. Yeah. <laughs> But Kelly Sheffield motioned with his forearms, pushed the pass up. We want to get Dana Redke the ball. Don't pass us off the net. Nicely done in transition. Boy, they're touching a lot of balls from Redke, one of the very best. What a dig. Barnes in the backcourt. And Redke over the top. Kayla Banworth again <laughs> played for you in 26. She's pointing up, she's pointing down. She called that one good. Coach Cook wanted the out call, but he looked at his assistant, Kayla Banworth, and said, no, that time it was in. Look at the versatility from Dana Retke. Yeah. A lot of middles cannot hit balls with a lot of air underneath them. She looks very comfortable. And she and her setter, Hilly, have so much experience together, as you mentioned, coming to school early and working together. And Hill Hidney has so much confidence, she can just throw up a, a, trouble, a trouble set high, and Redke will take a nice high swing. Tied at four, just underway here in the third. Clark has been really good, as has Knuckles. Nice. What a good read. Oh, they're ruling that that ball touched the block. The officials are trying to signal one another. They thought maybe that was four contacts. Into the deep cross court corner and finding a piece of the sideline. Yeah, more often than not, Paul, that ball that gets attacked into the net court does get some touch on the forearms of the block, so I like that they let that play go. Tied at five after the service error from Kenzie Knuckles. Here's another look. In the middle of the last rally, ball hits. Yeah, looks yeah, like it got yeah, arms. It yeah. often does. What happens is the spin will drive the net court down a little, and then the ball has more room to cross. And all it has to do is make a little bit of contact on the blocker forearm. A couple of service errors creeping into the repertoire of Dana Retke and Wisconsin here early in the third. Retke played a lot of volleyball for you this summer in the VNL. When she came to a tryout camp, what did you see? 
from then, someone who had just finished their second year of college volleyball that made her capable of being on your roster. Some of the things that we're seeing here, lots of versatility for somebody at six. Oh, bad break for the Huskers. Haynes netted on the block. Cannot touch the net. But showing great versatility. And for somebody 6'8 to move like that, it's very unusual to have that kind of lateral speed and the ability to serve tough, to play some defense, to hit off two feet and one foot, front of the setter, behind the setter. Stiffern's a kill and a sigh of relief. That gets the Nebraska fans on their feet. Yep, they got to get Stiverns going, and it starts with a good first contact, so Haynes doesn't have to move much, and then she can feed Stiverns. Stiverns hitting zero, three kills, three errors, 12 attempts. Out of the back row, and the timing not there. Wow, that is a bad, unforced error. Really well played by the Huskers on the combination play in the middle, though. They basically got themselves a free ball and a good look at a scoring at a at a point, but roll shotting into the net. Cubic is hitting negative four kills, six errors on 21 swings. Look at Knuckles. Knuckles is doing a phenomenal job receiving serve. Sun through the block and down. Number 11, Lexi Sun, now with eight kills on 22 swings. Yeah, her first one, she tried a little off speed, but the defender behind the block, Sydney Hilly, wasn't having, wasn't fooled at all. So using the block to her advantage with that second opportunity, well executed by Lexi Sun. We saw her whole range of shots yesterday in the, in the regional semifinals. Sun again. Not this time. Wow. Talk about closing off the line. Danielle Hart has been playing with an injured thumb all season long. Where does this one get stuff from? I think Oof. it was all Duello with a strong right hand. Just what Wisconsin was talking about this morning. Shut the line down and get a really strong outside hand that turns in and deflects the ball toward the center of the court. That was a perfect example of what Coach Sheffield was talking to us about this morning. And another block on the outside by Duello. That's now seven scoring blocks for Wisconsin to only two for Nebraska. And Wisconsin, on an average basis, has been blocking a lot more balls so far in the tournament than they did during the regular season. And they're comparable because they're in the Big Ten. Those are all tournament games. And that ball drifts out of bounds, tied at nine. Wisconsin won the opening set easily, 25 to 18. They came back from a 14 to 11 deficit to take the second by a score of 25-22. So a must-win situation for the Huskers to stay alive and increase their streak to five of stri five straight national semifinals. And sweet checks back into the game. These are the three rotations with tough serving where Nebraska could run some points. Oh, wow. Haggerty saves it again. Nothing. She had nothing to work with and gets a kill. The best you would normally hope for is just keep the ball alive. Right. Is that a bad block? It is a bad block. you got to shut that down. Missed opportunity for Nebraska. Sweet going to run behind. She has time. Off speed again. Haggerty is there. Oh, they called a lift. A lift called against Wisconsin. Boy, what an effort by Haggerty, who's been everywhere. Remember, this is a player who missed her sophomore year, had to sit out after back surgery. She was Big Ten Freshman of the Year the previous season. Yep, lift called. That would, look at that. That was Dana Retke getting back there and playing some defense. Yeah. Smart play by Sun to get two players on the floor for off-speed shot. Transition opportunity, Cubic. Retke blocking on the outside. Sydney Hilly in the middle. Sydney Hilly lets Retke take it one on one. Sydney Hilly is a 
first team academic All-American. That was a pretty smart choice. Some setters look to attack regularly. She rarely does. What a smart time to do it. Her first attack in a long rally, waiting well into the match. That ball hit out of bounds. What about the match that the Libero Tiffany Clark, the transfer from Michigan, is playing so far? She has been everywhere for Wisconsin. Was she the center on the O-line? I can't remember. We'll have to revisit <laughs> that picture. Nice play by Logberg. Haggerty again. Up into the block. Smart shot that time by Maddie Kubik, the freshman out of Iowa that really, really needed something positive to happen. What a season Kubik has had also. Oh, Big yeah. Ten freshman of the year. Not playing to her level so far today. But carrying doing every skill, every phase so well. Nebraska asks a lot from her, and she's been delivering. Clark again on a dig Ooh. and a cover, and then that ball missed badly out of bounds. 13 to 11, Wisconsin. Tenth regional final for the Badgers. Their record is two and seven coming in. And remember that painful, painful loss to Stanford a couple of years ago in this building after being up two sets to none. Nice touch by Retke. Danielle Hart with the kill. Timeout, Nebraska. Nebraska really up against it. Retke, her serve, usually very, very reliable and dangerous, has uh, gone off the tracks a little bit. Through the first two sets, Wisconsin only missed a pair of serves. In the third set, they've already missed five. That's five free points for Nebraska. That is way too giving. Lobert. Here's a chance for the Huskers. And Kubik looking for hands. And we might have a touch his call. Good work by the first referee. Good work by the Corn Huskers. Karch coming out of the timeout. Megan Miller back on. Oh, nice swing. Danielle Hart down the line. She has been coming on this season. Her numbers are getting better and better. Last 14 matches, hitting 353. And what a weapon she is. But it started with that great first touch from, Stif uh, from Tiffany Clark in zone one. And again for Hilly. She didn't have a lot of options because Lobert dove, her left side hitter dove and is on the floor, really has no approach, which means she gets in the way of her middle who wants to approach. So it's either set back to Duello or attack herself. Yeah, she finds the kill. Shouldn't Nebraska realize that? They should. Good swing by Kubik. That's the kind of swing we've seen all season long for the Big Ten freshman of the year. Attacking high hands. Cubic average just under three kills per set. Hit near, nearly 230, 2.5 digs. Not a bad first year in the Big Ten Conference. Sun with some space. What a dig. Emmy Dodge in the backcourt. And again. Boy, Sun has taken some difficult swings. Thinks better of it here. Good block on the outside. A bit chased by Tiffany Clark. She's part of the O-line. You just go. 
thought she was going to lose a hit there. Great hustle. I think number 17 in the red Libero jersey for Wisconsin has been phenomenal. First and serve receive. Lexi Sun stumbling backwards, could not keep that ball in play. If you're wondering, you see a lot of spin, what looked like double contacts. The first contact off the block or defensively, as long as you don't lift it or the ball comes to a stop, the refs let that go. And I'm, I'm, there was a rule change many years ago. I'm much in favor of it. Yep. You can also do it off serve receiving, even yep. though most people use their platforms. Well, that one's another conversation. Nice play. Nice play by Molly Haggerty again. But we saw the strong right hand, outside hand of Duello getting a positive block touch. That's exactly what Wisconsin was looking to do. Take, watch this right hand of Duello. That sets up the play. Haggerty finishes it. Haggerty now with 12 kills. Nebraska needs to get out of this rotation. Oh, they do. Just able to tuck that ball down inside of Hart. Number 18 in white. Sabo coming back on, along with Drunik to serve and block up front. Sabo, he's got a pretty good arm in transition. She's a lefty. Wisconsin's got to be aware. Yeah, and they upgraded their deep, uh, their block at the net. So Nebraska trying to use their extra substitutions. Easy serve. Trouble. Easy serve. That was a low swing. Sun got away with it. Much better trajectory. The young players out there, good things happen when you hit the ball up into the top of the block. Yeah, and this one gets the, after a great up, gets the left hand of Duello, and that left hand wasn't pointed where it needed to go. The ball deflects off for a point. Sun now in double figures with 10 kills. Ball set tight. Up into the block, offensive rebound, restart the point. Oh, not this time. Sabo on the outside with Schwarzenbach. Tied at 18, timeout Badgers. Yep, that defensive substitution paying off for the Huskers. Nebraska are five-time national champions, one of the most storied programs in college volleyball history. Anybody think they were ever going for a moment going to go away? Never going to happen. The last four years, four Nebraska have won two national championships. National runner-up last year. What a classic match that was against the Stanford Cardinal. They're coming up later on against Russ Rose and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Stanford's won seven, Penn State, excuse me, Stanford's won eight, Penn State's won seven, and a question mark for number five. Here are the teams that have gone to five straight national semifinals. Stanford Cardinal, the UCLA Bruins, and then the Texas Longhorns. They won it in 2012 and got back to the national semifinals the subsequent four straight years. That guy had a Minnesota sweatshirt on earlier when the crowd was booing him. Now it's Nebraska. You know, you talk about Nebraska and the run that they've been on, but another part of it is 64 and 4 in the last six years in the months of November wow. and December. No wonder they've been in so many national semifinals. Their 29th regional final. A good response. Tied at 18. Stanford and Penn State still to come. Minnesota and Louisville. Minnesota, the number seven seed. Louisville, the darlings after upsetting the host Texas Longhorns, who were the number two seed. Stanford, the number three. Wisconsin, the number four. Haggerty. What a rip into the cross court. Give you Haggerty's numbers now, 14 kills, and she's been busy. That's swing number 36. They did that a lot yesterday, Paul, when they gave up a few points. Coming out of the timeout, they were looking strongly for Haggerty and Loberg. Paid off again for Wisconsin. 
There is Clark, Haggerty, four kills this set. Look who's back up front, Dana Retke. Good dig in the backcourt by Barnes. The O-line is really doing a good job. And oh. again, Tiffany Clark. circle around Kenzie Knuckles and missed it out of bounds. 20 to 18 is the lead. Five points away from their third ever national semifinal. Wow, that dig by Clark. She, her range is getting huge. Dove eight feet to the side to make that touch. 14 digs for the Libero for Wisconsin. Ooh, that ball might have been going out of bounds. Good set. Oh, no swing. WS weak sauce. Oh, Retke missed it out of bounds. That was a weak shot given up to Nebraska down the line, and Wisconsin could not take advantage. And they send their better server, but weaker blocker. Now rotates to the back row. Haynes, this should be a good chance for the Huskers to score with three solid blockers at the net. Oh, nice stab. Kubik with a dig and the block. Dana Retke with the stuff. We talk so much about her offense. What do you think about her as a blocker after having her in your gym? She's got good eyes and she's surprisingly fast for somebody 6'8 to get to either pin but what a block the both she and her right side blocker teammate Madison Duello at a mere six foot three compared to Retke 6'8 put up against Sun. Well Lauren Barnes at six, five foot six just sidled over and almost <laughs> disappeared. Sun again. Clark 15th dig. Point scoring opportunity not yet for Haggerty. Haggerty again. Repke with a magnificent read, and Nebraska needs a timeout. The lead is 22-19. There it is. Wisconsin three points away. And what did I mention right before first serve? Madison, Wisconsin is a mere 613 miles from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Going to be a tough road to hoe against their rivals, and they have many in the Big Ten, but it has been the Wisconsin Badgers so far up two sets to none in 22 to 19. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals Thursday on the 19th, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. The winner of this will take on the number one seed, Baylor Bears, who have advanced. Congratulations to them once again. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Back with my partner, three-time Olympic champion and head coach of the USA Women's Olympic team, Harch Kirai. Wow, Wisconsin has been really good. Nebraska's made some nice adjustments. They had lots of opportunities in set number two, and set number three has been the same. You talked about how unique Dana Redke is. I can think about Xu Ting, a current player for China at six foot seven. Ekaterina Gamova, one of the great hitters of all time at six foot eight for Russia. But they were opposites or outside hitters at that kind of height in the women's game. Have you ever seen an athlete like Dana Retke today or with the potential that she has playing in the middle? No, I haven't. And Coach Sheffield talked about it when he was saying when he first went to watch her at club practice there wasn't much to go but she saw her dribbling the ball she was a basketball player she did dance growing up so she did so many things I would advocate that for any young athlete also Female thought about male. play lots of different sports don't specialize early also thought about redshirting her for about an hour the first practice <laughs> away for the Badgers.
Good server at the line. Boy, Knuckles has been fantastic. Recky with the stuff. Match point. as well. Nebraska, another, as always, under head coach John Cook, a wonderful season. It finishes in the regional final. It was their 29th appearance in a regional final. They'll finish the year at 28 and 5. Wisconsin improves to 26 and 6. And the Big Ten champs, the number four overall seeds, will now be playing in Pittsburgh and they will take on the Baylor Bears. Just a solid, solid performance. You knew that it was going to be a battle, these two teams meeting for the third time on the season. And the numbers reflected it. Let's take a look once again at match point. Oh, it was. I gave it to Redke. <laughs> Come on, it was Molly Haggerty with the perfect stuff block on the outside. But Paul got to give me some love here. Nice job by number 23, who was outstanding at the offensive end as well. And joining us now, the Big Ten setter of the year, and now a semifinalist in the NCAA National Championship, Sydney Hilly. Congratulations. Talk to us about the journey of this team. Do you remember the days when you were 4-4 four and four <laughs> and lost three non-conference matches in this building? I do remember that, and I think a big reason of who we are today is because of that, and I think we did a great job learning from that and bringing that to practice every day, motivating us to get better, and I'm just so proud of this group. We're, it's a really special team to be a part of. So what were the, you talked about learning, what were the two, one or two big lessons? Yeah, I think the biggest thing was just our mentality is our passers were learning to attack the serves and the blockers up the net learning to attack it and just staying tough in those those really tight moments. And I think we did a great job of that today. You know every single set in the tournament is going to be a battle. So we are, we're enjoying the battle. Coach Sheffield talked about how you were probably too dependent offensively on Dana Recchi last year. Much more multidimensional this year. How? What are the things you done in training to make that happen? Oh, that's just a big credit to my passers. They're putting me in amazing situations. They don't get enough credit for what they do. And I just have so many options to go to. Molly, Grace, they went off tonight. You got Danielle, uh, Dwell, and Dana. I can go to anyone at any time. It makes my job really fun. But again, that's all my passers right there. The O-line. The O-line, yeah. <laughs> thanks thanks yeah, for giving us a minute and taking the pictures the seniors. And there aren't many. A lot of this group, I think you and Nebraska are going to be going at it for a while. Nebraska brings everybody back. So this, this matchup, and then there's Minnesota and Penn State and a couple of others. But, but talk about, you're following Lauren Carlini, and you left high school early because you wanted to be around Lauren yep. when her final semester here. Talk about that relationship and how it helped you develop into the conference's best setter. Yeah, my, my first semester here, Lauren was here training too, and we'd go in the gym and just set 
and just watching her, I learned so much, but also I get to talk to her about leadership. I called her in Italy, and she FaceTimed me and Kelly for like two hours, and that's just something, a Badger alumni, they're, they're rooting for you, they're always there for you, and it's really special. And you were saying you don't want to be Lawrence, you want to be the best Sydney Hilly you can be, but you have a chance now to do something that no Badger's done. That's true. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank Congratulations. You for having me. Thank you. Magnificent season. Thank you. And I know you hope that there are two more matches to go. Now it's time to start thinking about the Baylor yep. Bears. All <laughs> thank right. you. Well, mission accomplished here at home. Congratulations. Thank you. Sydney Hilly and the uh, Wisconsin Badgers advance in the Madison Regional. And there's the bracket. Number one versus number four, still to be determined later on this afternoon, early evening in the Austin, Texas, Minnesota versus Louisville, and then tonight closing it out. Stanford versus Penn State. They only have 15 championships between them. Wisconsin wins it.